Welcome to another video. This is Calculus 1. We're going to try out the chain rule and we might get something beyond the chain rule. But in helping students today, I discovered that many students struggle with this concept of the chain rule, especially for trig. So I'm going to solve these three problems. If it looks like a problem you have or you have a challenge with, it's going to help you. Remember to like this video, share it, leave a comment in the comment section, be subscribed if you're not subscribed. Let's not waste time, let's get into it. So the first problem, number one, is secant squared, the square root of x. It looks very easy, very simple but you have to avoid the general mistakes that I have seen students make. My first recommendation is to rewrite the problem. Don't leave it this way. Don't start solving it because I wouldn't start solving it this way. What I would do is I know that secant squared and then I have this one. See, I can't use this very well and this too is not safe. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say this thing I have can be written as secant of x raised to power one half and then everything squared. That is the meaning of this expression. If you can get this, then you can start. And you see the thing about chain rule is that if you start from the outside and you gradually keep going inside, you will never be wrong. So let's start from the outside. The outermost thing you can see is this exponent. So apply the laws of exponent, not laws of exponent. Apply the, the power rule of differentiation, which is just basically you bring down the two and subtract one from this. So our y prime is going to be this two comes down here. It's going to be two times. Don't forget to keep it in this same block of secant of x to the one half. Raised to power two minus one is one. You are done with the outside. Now let's go inside. The, when you go inside, you take it from the beginning. You're going to have to differentiate secant, but you cannot touch the argument. So what is the derivative of secant? The derivative of secant is secant of the argument times the tangent of the argument. Do not write secant, don't write this, and do not write this. These two are wrong because the argument of this function you're differentiating is x to the one half. So in your second move in the chain rule, it has to be multiplied by secant of x to the one half times the tangent of x to the one half. That is the second differentiation you have to do. Then the third differentiation is to go inside. So that's the third differentiation. What is the derivative of x to the one half? It's gonna be equal to one half of x raised to power negative one half. Now you are done with your differentiation. Some professors will say, once you do this, it's okay. But some professors will say you have to simplify or some say I don't want to see a negative exponent. So this is my recommendation. Whatever you do, if what you are doing looks like something in the beginning, just try to rewrite it. Like this x to the negative one half, I would like to write it as a square root but push it down. So what do I do? Get all the numbers or all the x's. So this one half will multiply this two and they will cancel out. So what I have left is just one over square root of x, that's it. So I just have one over the square root of x multiplied by secant of the square root of x multiplied by the secant of the square root of x times the tangent of the square root of x. That's it. Oh, I can actually multiply these two together so that my answer is secant squared of the square root of x. That's it. So my answer is secant squared of the square root of x tan the square root of x over the square root of x. This is my y prime. 
for the first question. Do not do this. And this is the answer to the first derivative. This one is similar to the last one we did. It's still a trig function. So what we're going to do, you don't need to rewrite anything uh, because nothing is raised to any power. But look, the argument of sine is cosine x squared minus 1. It is not a product. Do not treat this as if it is sine something times cosine something. So do not try to use f prime g plus f g prime. This does not work here because you're not multiplying sine by cosine. Cosine is inside of sine. So it is the chain rule you must use. This is not relevant. We're going to have y prime is equal to you're going to differentiate sine, keeping the argument. If you differentiate sine, what do you get? You're going to get cosine. You keep the argument. It's going to be cosine of x squared minus 1. You're done with the first thing, which is the first thing you see. Now you need to go inside. You're going to forget about sine and go inside here and differentiate cosine. Remember that the argument of this cosine is x squared minus 1. So don't change the argument. Never change the argument when you're differentiating. So here, if I differentiate cosine, I'm going to get minus sine. I actually want to use these blocks for it. It's better. So you can see what we did. So you have this. If I differentiate now the inside, I'm going to get minus sine. And the argument never changes x squared minus 1. So I have dealt with this. I have dealt with this. So now I need to go inside and differentiate x squared minus 1. It's going to be 2x. So I'm going to multiply by 2x. So what's my final answer? Let's clean up. Y prime is going to be equal to any number. Yes, I'm going to bring out the 2. 2x. And then here I'm going to have, um, oh, there's a minus here. So there's a minus here. Let's put minus 2x. So I'm going to have, um, let's write sine. I think this looks nicer. x squared minus 1 times cosine of the cosine of x squared minus 1. And this is the derivative you're looking for. This third one is a little tricky. Okay, remember my recommendation, whenever you have all these weird stuff like square roots or whatever, just make it an umbrella um, power. So I'm going to rewrite this to be equal to 3 plus x tan of pi x squared, everything raised to power one half. So now I'll begin the differentiation. Y prime is equal to, you deal with the outside first. It's going to be one over two times three plus x, sorry, three plus x tan of pi x squared raised to power, you subtract 1 from this is negative 1 over 2. You are done with the first move. The second move is come inside and take the derivative. So if I take the derivative of this, 3 is going to become 0. Okay, the derivative of 3 is 0. And then what's the derivative of this? The problem with this is it is a product of x and tan pi x squared. So here, when you take this derivative, it's going to be 0 plus this. So we ignore the 0, and then we have to apply the, the product rule. So here, you have to treat this as your f, treat this as your g, so that this would be f prime times g plus f times g prime. So let's see if I can squeeze that in there. So if this is my f, f prime is going to be 1, right? So it's going to be 1 times, because the derivative of x is 1. So let's do it here. Let f be equal to, let f of x 
be equal to 3, so that f prime of x equals 0. Equals, equals zero. No, 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 no. F, f of x equals x. That's what I, the one I want. I already know this is 0, so let f of x be x. f prime of x is going to be 1. And then I'm going to say g of x is equal to 10 pi x squared. Okay, let's differentiate this. What is g prime? g prime of x is going to be, you're now going to use a ch the chain rule here again. Remember, the derivative of tangent is secant squared, but don't change the argument. So it's going to be equal to secant squared. The argument is pi x squared, right? Now that you're done with this one, you have to go inside and say, hey, this is not a number, it's not just x. What's the derivative of pi x squared? Well, what's the derivative of pi x squared? This is a constant, this is a variable. So it's gonna be two pi x times two pi x. So if you clean this up, you will notice that this is equal to, um, it's just two pi x secant squared pi x squared. This is the derivative of your g. So let's go apply our product rule. Remember product rule says that y prime is equal to f prime of g plus f of g prime. That's if y is equal to f times g, which is what we have. f times g is y in this case, okay? I know we're using y here, but that's what we have. So this is going to be equal to, let's write it. What is f prime times g. f prime is 1, and what is g? g is this guy. So our first answer is going to be 1 times ta this, so it's going to be just the tangent of pi x squared. You're done. Plus, what is the second part? It's going to be f times g prime. What is f? f is x and g prime is this. So use this to multiply this. You're going to end up with 2 pi x squared secant squared pi x squared. It's going to be 2 pi x squared secant squared pi x squared. That's what you have as your derivative. It looks crazy, right? Is there anything else you can do? There's nothing. Oh, this is a square root sign. So, and it's negative. It means you can take it down. So, let's clean this up. So, most professors will say no negative exponent. So, what you should do is every time a negative exponent shows up and it's one half, it means it's square root and it's going down. That's the meaning. Okay? So, if this is going down, one half is, means something else is going down. The one stays up, the two goes down. This stays up. So your answer, y prime, I can see clearly that it is this on top of these two numbers or expressions. So you're going to have your answer being 10 of pi x squared plus 2 pi x squared times secant squared pi x squared all divided by 2 times this. And 2 times this is going to be 2 times 3 plus x tan pi x squared. This is the derivative you're supposed to get using the chain rule plus the product rule. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.